What's up everybody, it's Frank from 5am Ramen and I am in the city of Takasaki. Takasaki is the largest city in Gunma Prefecture, right next door to Tokyo, not far, only about an hour on the train. And of course today I'm showcasing the best Takasaki ramen restaurants. They have a fine selection here, let's get to it. those finding yourself here for the first time, 5am ramen is your go-to ramen resource in Japan. If you want to learn where the best spots are, or just learn more about the magical noodle dish that is ramen, you've come to the right place. I'm Frank, born and raised in Tokyo, and most of my body consists of ramen. This video is actually the first leg of a big northern Japan trip. I'm visiting four prefectures in northern Japan. Gunma, Niigata, Yamagata, and Fukushima for some of Japan's finest ramen. The ramen up here is insanely good. This part of the country has more ramen shops per capita than anywhere else. So consider this video the first in a Northern Japan ramen series. I'm in Takasaki today, the largest city in Gunma Prefecture, northwest of Tokyo. I have fond childhood memories of skiing in Gunma but I never really explored Takasaki, ramen included. And first on the list is Seijinken, or known by its full name, Teuchi Ramen Seijinken. Seijinken was a local ramen shop operating from 1953 to 2016. After they closed in 2016, locals were devastated. Long story short, someone that worked there decided to carry the torch and sort of reopen it. And this is where I'm visiting today, the reopened Seijinken. In their signature ramen, they use a very light soy sauce, but there's a good amount of richness from pork bones and chicken skin that they boil in the soup. But the noodles here are the clear star. I'll get to them later again. Alrighty, so back at the hotel, got to shave a little bit. Finally, I felt a little bit gruffy. And here are my thoughts on my first Takasaki ramen shop, Seijinken. I can already feel by walking around Takasaki that the ramen shops are not going to be as crowded. That's a good thing. The ramen itself, it was delicious. It was a light soy sauce, very light, almost watery, but that doesn't mean it wasn't flavorful. It just wasn't as bold or as salty. There was this chicken fatty richness in the bowl, but it was still overall light. Little bits of negi to provide nice sweetness when you crunch into them wonderful quality bamboo shoots. But uh, the topping that stood out the most, I would say, were the pork chashu. It wasn't uh, old school and kind of boring, let's say. Really juicy, oh, delicious, delicious. But the highlight was definitely the teuchimen, or the hand-cut noodles. Now, when you walk in, they're gonna ask you hosomen or teuchimen. Basically, I went for teuchimen. That's actually part of their full ramen shop name. I had to get the teuchimen. And these are hand-cut. They're a little bit frizzy. They have quite a bit of water in them, but they're relatively light to pick up and it's like perfect for slurping, my God. It's like they're designed to be slurped. You could just feel the hand cut care that went into them, how they were a little bit uneven. I just love that frizzy texture. Delicious, delicious bowl. So far, Takasaki has not disappointed. Now I have to wait until sundown for my next bowl because most Takasaki ramen shops, they're actually not open for dinner. A lot of them are only open for lunch, so here I am waiting for the next bowl. I've got a little snack to tide me over and I can't wait to dive into the next bowl. I do a little bit of work and wait for that sun to set. I decide I'm gonna to walk to the ramen shop. I do a whole lot of walking during this whole Northern Japan ramen trip. Making my way to ramen shop number two right now and it is pitch black out. It's funny, compared to Tokyo, I mean, you don't have the neon bright lights everywhere like you normally do. So that's one thing that I'm always reminded of when I come out to uh, areas outside of Tokyo. Almost at the ramen shop, Chuka Soba Aoki, second. Making my way through the darkness, I arrive at Chuka Soba Aoki, second. With a ticket machine, I went top left, although I went back and forth before making my decision. I'll talk about this later. Their niboshi ramen has chicken and niboshi, or dried sardines. And among toppings, the chicken meatball, or tsukune, is a nice highlight. I leave Chuka Sobaoki second, walking again to make some room for the next bowl. I'm making my way over to the next ramen shop. And here's a little recap of the bowl I just enjoyed at Chuka Sobaoki second. Basically, they have two bowls, a niboshi, or dried sardine ramen, and also another bowl that's a white soy sauce. 
He said, you know, the white soy sauce might be the most popular, but there are a lot of people that order what I ordered. In the end, I went for the niboshi, and it was really a soft and delicate seasoning that they use, not salty at all. And as such, the niboshi really stood out, but in a very gentle way, they prepared the niboshi. The niboshi or dried sardine flavor was there. Compared to some other delicate niboshi bowls out there, I feel like I got a little bit more of the bitterness than normal. But again, the bitterness was not overpowering, just a little bit. Thin noodles, red raw onions to break up the broth a little bit, nice chashu pork, and overall a refreshing light bowl and very easy to squeeze in one more because of those thin noodles. I'm gonna get my map out again here and uh, see where I need to go. So I decided to visit ramen shop Menya Jotaro for my final bowl of the day. Do stick around though, because I'm not done after this bowl. I'm diving into more Takasaki ramen tomorrow as well. Menya Jotaro's ramen aims to strike a fine balance between being heavy and refined, but I ordered a heavier ramen, this one here. On another note, the interior of the ramen shop definitely stands out with its fun manga and anime sort of theme. Apparently the owner is a big fan of manga Jojo's Bizarre Adventure. After finishing up, I retreat back to my hotel and I'll let you know there what I thought. Okay, so back at the hotel, here's a little recap of my third bowl at Jotaro. They have a big menu. Often the case when you get outside of Tokyo, they have a bigger kitchen, they can give you more options. And I went top left as I normally do and I got their Shio Python. Now, Python is a heavier broth, whereas Chintan is a lighter broth. This was Shio Python or salt seasoned Python, but it was kind of in between Chintan and Python. In a strange way, it kind of reminded me of like a Thanksgiving turkey gravy, or maybe even more so a chicken gravy, just because it was very fatty, very oily, but tasty, of course. I will say it was on the saltier side and uh, a little bit of sweetness too. And the saltiness, it almost had this tangy quality to it. I could have sworn that it was a shoyu or soy sauce seasoned bowl. It was also brown colored, but it said shio on the menu, salt seasoned. It was salty either way. The ramen didn't blow me away per se, but it was definitely great in terms of cost performance. On top of that, what I really liked about this place was that the inside was, yeah, kind of like a retreat. You had uh, someone there in the corner, for example, reading manga. They had bookshelves full of manga. It just had this relaxed, kind of fun atmosphere. You had some anime figurines as well. So overall, cool vibes. Now I'm going to get back to it again tomorrow in Takasaki. Again, a lot of these places are only open for lunch, so I got to wait until tomorrow for day number two. The following day, I wake up really early to visit another part of Gumma, away from Takasaki City, for two bowls. The first place is actually open from 7 a.m. Don't worry, I'll feature these two ramen shops and their ramen properly in a separate video. So basically, right after these two bowls, I rush back to Takasaki City to squeeze in two more ramen bowls. The ramen at these last two shops couldn't be more different. Kuromatsu is the first one. It's made a huge splash in the ramen world since they opened. Look how beautiful their ramen, or chukasoba as they call it. Is. The chukasoba I order is with all toppings and is seasoned with a white soy sauce. You get to choose white soy sauce or regular soy sauce. The soup is primarily dried fish and fish flakes. Very soft in flavor. Nakajima, the other ramen shop, on the other hand, is as classic as it gets. You can get this sense just from looking at the ramen. The owner here actually worked at one of my favorite Tokyo ramen shops, Kazuya. You can see the resemblance. I'll create some sort of ramen family tree in the future. Now, while the ramen at Nakajima is classic leaning, think of it as an upgraded classic ramen. With a full, full stomach after these two bowls, I head back to the hotel. Alrighty, here's a recap of the last two Takasaki bowls. I had to pretty much run from one shop to the other, got some exercise in the process, but glad I was able to fit them both into the schedule. Now, as to the first place, Kuromatsu, their ramen was pretty much a work of art. I mean, it was a beautiful bowl. The way it's presented, you can tell that they really pay attention to the details in this one. Starting with the soup, it's a very light, in the case of what I ordered, white soy sauce or shiro shoyu ramen. So light in fact that the flavors that were there, whether it's fish or even the kelp, it was for lack of a better word, very watery, but of course that was intentional. 
It was watery, but so subtle and almost like restrained. Just so delicate, I guess you could say. And personally, I prefer my ramen a little bit punchier with the soup, but I can totally appreciate what they were doing. And I think this is something I need to wrap my head around more perhaps, this style of ramen. Because you're seeing a lot more of these style of bowls out there. And everything else, of course, was excellent. The noodles are made in house, beautiful fold there, maybe even one of the best folds there in ramen as well as whole wheat flex there too in the noodles. And depending on when you go, they're gonna have either thin noodles or also uh, thicker flat noodles. Toppings were delicious. The mitsuba provided a wonderful freshness to the bowl and also the slow cooked chashu pork were excellent. On top of that, yeah, your usual suspects, delicious, delicious wonton dumplings. Overall, excellent bowl, very much modern ramen at its finest, let's say. Now for the last shop I went to, Nakajima, we're going back in time a little bit because this was definitely more classic leaning. It was so old school that they had the cha shu there looking closer to Chinese style char siu, which is fork roasted pork. Not necessarily less complex, but a lot simpler in terms of flavor or something you would expect maybe back in the day. You do get strong fish notes. Anyway, it was a wonderful bowl to round it all out. I had the place pretty much to myself, and it was also redemption because I tried to go there yesterday, but they were closed, and now I got to end at that place. So that's it for me. I hope you enjoyed this Takasaki ramen video, and if that's the case, please hit that like button and also subscribe if you haven't already. This is Frank from 5am Ramen. Thanking you for watching, and until next time. Well, at least I know where to shop. So light and delicate that actually. Oh, <laughs> A little bit noisy here under the highway, but uh, interesting spot. It's lit up at least, not pitch black. And we have some graffiti. Unfortunately, no ramen graffiti. Bad side of town, not at all. This is Japan, still very safe. This is Frank from 5am Ramen, thanking you for watching. And yeah, until next time, I will see you.